It's day 18 of our evening 6 p.m. Pacific broadcast on getting outdoors during this physical distancing time. Um, Kimber, could you grab off the printer uh, my nose? Sure. And, that? uh, that's okay. Um, and we're starting right here by the rain barrel, um, coming right off of our roof. And I, in my opinion, um, all the kind of drainage that we do in the cities and things like that have been so primitive, really, for the last hundred years of development. Now, currently, they're starting to um, build parking lots, things like that, so that the water goes and gets starts perking down in the ground before it runs off into uh, drainage pipes and into the creeks directly, which are polluting everything. So, um, anyway, I'll get around to that in just a moment. Um, today, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow the path of this rain that comes down here, goes into... Um, a rain garden that we built which goes into a bioswale that we built that goes into a pond that we built built that uh, filters even further before it gets into a creek um, and on that whole journey we're going to do an amphibian hunt yes. we're going to look for what kind of amphibians we have um, hiding in these uh, places and also probably stop and talk about some of the really cool wetland plants um, that we have installed in our rain gardens and bioswales and ponds and the creek which was also a restoration project done just two years ago. Um, and so just a couple of reminders before we get going is that we just want to inspire you to get outside, get a little bit of sun. Uh, even if it's not sunny, get out there. It really makes you feel so much better and keeps you healthy. And then uh, we're getting prepared to share uh, my old Wolf Journey uh, Earth Conservation course curriculum so that everybody that's studying at home can get their kids and themselves outdoors for at least 20 minutes every day doing a field exercise in your backyard or in the back closest uh, spot of earth that you have, maybe even on your porch. Ooh. All right, and so now I'm going to start going down the path, and oh, I'll put this in my back pocket, and um, we're going to end up, and I have my camera, my guitar stashed at a location I hope we get to before 30 minutes runs out, <laughs> um, which is, you know, the average of our time broadcasting, and uh, it's at a really cool spot, so I'm hoping we get that next to the creek. Oh, and I don't want to carry these all with me, um, except that I will take my favorite amphibian book. So, Kim, I'm going to... I can, I can grab carry that. it, yeah. sure. Um, this one is a little more easy to get nowadays for some reason. That one, um, what is that? Amphibians of Oregon. Yeah, Amphibians of Oregon, Washington, British Columbia. Of course, you have to find the one for your area. Uh, this is by Corcoran and Toms. Um, the one that's a little more easy is the Seattle Audubon Society's Amphibians of the Pacific Northwest, if you're in this area. Um, now, rain harvesting rainwater is so important in dry areas as well as places... Um, you know, where there's water scarcity, which is becoming increasingly the case with so much development, especially in California and the desert southwest and virtually Texas, everywhere. And so this is a great um, volume here. I know it's backwards on Facebook, but rainwater harvesting um, for drylands and beyond, uh, volume two, <laughs> you can do volume one. This is part of kind of a uh, permaculture series. And permaculture, if you don't know what that is, is kind of a design of sustainable agriculture and appropriate technologies um, so that you are becoming as self-sufficient as possible um, in your living environment. Even if it's an apartment, I've seen some amazing perm permacultured up uh, porches and uh, balconies and things like that. It's pretty cool. Um, Gaia's Garden is a wonderful uh, permaculture book in general use. There's uh, Basics of Permaculture Design. There's some even older books that are really the fundamental books for the area. I'm just going to set these right them. here. Oh, We're not okay. going to take them with us. Okay. So, all right, this rain barrel was designed by Dan Borba. He is the rain barrel guy in the um, Puget Sound area, and he lives in Tacoma. And he repurposes these veggie barrels that were had veggie oil in them. And that one, one of them had onions in it. This one had onions? I don't oh, remember. some of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have about nine yep. around and uh, get water out of our area. And so uh, we have it going to here, it kind of gets filtered there with a screen. We wash it every one, you know, year or so. And then it's designed where you can pour water out the bottom to water your things during the dry times, in the dry summer. And, or it overflows up in through this, um, this uh, hose. And I'm gonna um, start turning the, let's turn the cameras around and follow this whole path of water. And hopefully you'll be able to see some cool amphibians can along I do the way. It like that? Uh, yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh. Huh. Cool. And um, so you can see 
that right here, uh, the hose comes out of the rain barrel. We have another hose coming in. And then I dug a little trench and put some uh, flex pipe um, going under the ground so that I can mow right over the top, obviously. The flex pipe is only down about six inches. And it goes uh, across our lawn over here. Ah! Yep. And it runs out, the pipe comes out at the end right here. Now at this spot, this is our rain garden. Now it's huge. <laughs> Most people's rain well, gardens yeah, in town. Yeah. So it goes uh, all the way in front of our orchard. Yeah. That kind of turns into bioswale up there and then That's the pond true. will be over there. The and pond. then we're going to continue off into the creek restoration back there. So that's exactly. just to let you know where we're going. By the way, tomorrow we're going to tour the orchard, show you what all trees are in here. We might install, start installing our sidewalk garden, which we'll see on the route here. All right, so right here, we first, now it's, I recommend just getting the easiest plants uh, possible when you do, and all you need is like 10 feet of a rain garden for most any house. And so don't do this craziness we did, which is a big educational demonstration project. You don't need to go all the way down there. But, um, here I started, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this whole thing in my favorite bog plants. But, uh, but uh, uh, a lot to maintain. And so we've got a rush right here, which is, of course, the easiest thing to maintain in a rain garden. We've got uh, spirea or hard hack. Um, which really t takes over. There's willow right here, but we take our willows out because those will turn into trees and we don't want that the case to shade out um, our fruits that we have growing along the edges, which we'll show you tomorrow. And then down in here, I have some of my favorite plants. We've got um, Labrador tea that comes out of a bog. And um, down below, I put sphagnum moss, but uh, it doesn't. it's not wet enough during the summer uh, to survive. And what else do we have down in there? I can't remember of <laughs> all the different um, uh, bog plants, but it was so much fun installing those. Oh yeah, um, and then each, our orchard is designed to kind of try to look aesthetically pleasing from the road, but we have not started uh, weeding it this summer, this spring yet, so it's still looking crazy. Um, all the little mounds, that's obviously very weedy. I'm gonna put for my camera. Yeah. There right there um we tried to install um bog blueberries along in here and a couple survived there's actually one right there and yeah, it's right in front of the mound yeah. right right there and here's some more spirea that survived um going down through here now this dries out in the summer pretty much and so we really i didn't know how well it would you know, one of the things you do, need to do before you install anything is uh, watch water flow on your property for a full year. That's the first permaculture principle is observe and interact with your property before you decide to do anything because it's always different <laughs> than you think. Yeah, speaking of our little bridges underwater. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is the spot where we are have our, and we, this is the new garden that we're going to install for a community sharing, by the way. So we'll talk about this tomorrow. Maybe plant wildflowers in the front, potatoes in another row, and we'll do that tomorrow. But this is the spot where we have our farm stand during the summer. Oh, look at this one. This is Kim's, one of Kim's favorite uh, plants. We'll tell you about it tomorrow. <gasps> Keep it away. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> and these are the only surviving plants of Salal that we first tried to install on the front, but they're too slow growing to compete with the grass. So we'll, but it's a wonderful uh, native plant here. So let's stick to the, inside can we jump across Whatever. yeah well yeah because it's too muddy on the, uh, the new garden going in all right so, yeah in here are some great wetland plants can you um oh there's a little shrew or something that just swam across right here what? Just, yeah we gotta let it get out of there or it's gonna be too wet oh i see it where it's right is it still swimming yep oh there it went did, did i miss it yeah, probably. It's back in there now. Okay, yeah. Little rodentia. Mm. We should leave it alone. Yeah, we'll leave it alone. It. Especially since it's so wet now. We kind yeah. of scared it and made it all wet. Um, anyway, check out these. Uh, these are some nice wetland. Now, rushes were one we showed you. The tall ones right over there. Here's the brush. And then right here, we've got um, some 
let's double check yep sedges and these really cut you if you ever get a grass cut it might have been a sedge these are so sharp and they'll actually they grab on so you can't even slide your finger down so there's rushes sedges and grasses and the way you keep them apart is the rhyme you can turn it toward me oh, okay. the rhyme <laughs> that is uh let's see sedges have edges rushes are round grasses have leaves on stalks to the ground yeah uh so again sedges have edges very sharp edges rushes are round they, you feel them they're just round but they have stalk. a very pokey top they do have so pokey if you're going to be bending down weeding watch or your in eyes rushes, definitely Always watch your watch eyeballs eyes. and grasses have leaves on stalks to the ground. They're almost all edible, but you have to double check your information on that. All right, let's turn it around. And in, and in front, we've got um, our raspberries that obviously need some serious weeding. Uh, we are doing other things this winter, <laughs> but we're gonna tackle those soon. Are we going up to the pond? Yeah. So, uh, oh, um, in front of this is our uh, bioswale. So we have uh, water contained any pollution coming off the road we uh, try to make sure that I mean we inoculated mushrooms out there in the front we yep and then you can show the road too just a little bit see I how did. far away it is and um, um, we try to try to get things to not you know pollution to, to kind of stay over there although this year we're just doing a special community garden out in front um, just as a demonstration during this time of social distancing to uh, help people improve their food security. You can see the it's totally full here. This dries out also in the summer, but it lasts a little bit longer. And then um, we're just starting to put our fence back up for the deer. We'll start coming in our trees here in a second. Uh, but this goes down quite a bit. This is the full pond. So we went rain garden to bioswale to pond. And this is, we put installed cattails. And actually there was somebody asked a question on YouTube um, who has seen our really popular uh, cattail video where we harvested the cattail, mm -hmm. remember, and then put install them in here and then cooked them oh, up. sure. Yeah. And um, anyway, so these are the cattails. They're looking good. They're pretty much all fallen over because of the winter. And of course, when- And I harvested the leaves harvested too. harvested a lot of leaves yeah. out of there. And dried them. Yep. Perhaps. Now there are a ton of Pacific chorus tree frogs in here. But of course, I'm being super loud. So there. <laughs> if we um, go around, we might. Oh, I should have gone the other way, but that's okay. I might be able to rustle some up. Let's see. I'm just going to walk right through here and see if I can rustle some up. Normally, I wouldn't do this because I'd be disturbing them. Yeah. And. Uh, but for educational purposes, we do tend to disturb animals sometimes because it's worth the. You know, gives them even more. Maybe. What's up? Egg masses. I don't know oh, if they're egg laying masses. Eggs oh, they're not. totally laying eggs. I okay, forgot so about egg masses. Not. Wait a minute. What's right here? Is that egg mass? Yeah. Or, no, that's just a leaf. Okay. Let's see if I can find an egg mass. No, it might be a little early. Forgot yet. about them. No, I mean, they're singing like crazy. You're right. It is only April 2nd. They're probably laying them, but they're really first days of it. Shoot. Yeah, I don't want to hit any egg okay, masses. Well, All right. Okay. Well, we're gonna keep going around. These are our plums, by the way, here. Um, along the edges, which we plant all these trees in mounds, as I'll describe tomorrow, in order to keep their feet dry during the winter. And also it wicks moisture up into the mounds during the summer so we don't have to water. That's the end of the pond right there, but it's not the end of the water flow. In high water events, it is flowing. Yep, it is it's flowing, flowing right from here mm -hmm. all the way over all the ground yep. along the fence. And we're going to keep following house. that route right okay. now to go show you how we kind of get it to filter even more before it gets out to the creek. So it's nice and pure by the time that happens. So These are. We walked three sides of a rectangle. Yeah, and we're walking through our kiwis right now that are, oh, just starting to come out. Yeah. And our uh, grapes. These are some quince right here, flowering quince. Well, they're mostly just used for rootstock, putting other trees on. By the way, this is a huge citrus forest, which is really important in the wetlands. When it gets really wet, it's about the only evergreen that will grow, which we'll show you in the new project coming up here. Here's some cedar trees that we um, 
harvested out of a place where there are a ton of little seedlings and we're putting those in where we can. Okay, we're back to, there's the pond. The third side of the rectangle. And now all this whole area was reed canary grass, which is an invasive grass from the savannas of Africa. And so we left the reed canary grass in here because it is amazing survival. Food right now for sugar in those stalks, uh, the, amazing for fire, amazing for thatching, things like that. But we try to, you know, it's really hard to weed it out of everywhere. The only way to really beat it back is to completely shade it by foresting an area. Uh, so anyway, we do like a little patch. Oh yeah, and here are all of the other hoses coming out of all our other rain barrels on all corners of the house. That is a lot of hose. <laughs> and right now it's just to kind of get water redirected away from what was that noise? Oh, away from the house. But during the summer, we actually, in late spring when it stops raining, we actually pour water out of our rain barrels if we don't need them for the gardens and keep water in that pond for until the frogs. frogs are completely done uh, reproducing and croaking, which hopefully they'll start croaking by the end of this. So yeah, this is all kind of a path of water at during high water times and uh, it, the idea is to get it to not flow directly from the road into the new into the creek. And so it goes right along here on the back of our property, along the fence. Uh, this is some old blueberries that we have here, amazing producers. And across the fence over there, where this used to all be Kim's uh, grandparents' old property where her dad and six of his brothers, four or five of his brothers grew up. Uh, but. Grand, Kim's grandmother sold it to the city in 2005 or earlier um, mm -hmm, in order to preserve it as wetlands. And so now it is being, um, uh, oh yeah, I gotta say hi to Sandra and Bryce, who used to live across the street. That's right. <laughs> yeah. and, your camera, so and David's, oh my gosh, he's a great permaculturist. Hey, David. Um, <laughs> hey, Penny. Oh my gosh, I'm high school. So, um, anyways, so the. Um, yeah, so this is all now being reforested, or, except for where there's good grasses and things that are native. Oh, is this some tracks? Mm, yeah, we got to do some tracking starting this weekend. Uh, yeah, so again, this is pretty wet because it had been raining during the last couple of days. This is kind of a little um, area I dug out during the summer. We can actually pump water out of this um because the water table but the water table drops like it's what's interesting this soil is uh, about a foot of amazing fertile soil and then about a foot of clay and then sand as far as you can dig and so after it stops raining for about two weeks the water table drops like crazy so that's actually a big metal break the, the yeah. hole so that nobody can fall in frogs like it yes too yeah for sure right in there. all right so we're going to now continue we um the water as you can see is still standing here from the recent rains and then it turns and goes across into the kim's old parents grandparents old property over here it's now owned by the city of puyallup oh look at the amazing tracks right here oh sorry but we've got dead ones right here <laughs> yeah Oh my gosh, now in the comments, please put, if you know whose tracks these are, they love wetlands. Say that again? Yeah, who's, put in the phone? comments, uh, if you know whose tracks these are. They love being in wet areas like this. All right. Oh, look, what? look. Oh, there's some other cool tracks. Yep. Yeah, now that's, um, you can see that they're similar fingers, but the fingers are a little wider and there may be even one pointing backwards. Yeah, for sure. Look at that one. Oh, yeah. Right there. I'll get the size. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that finger going backwards right there. It's got the little space right alien finger. Spacing. So there's two species here, y'all. Yep. So Put in the comments who you think it is. One. And we have... All right. So cross over yeah. into the restored on, area that's being restored. Currently, and again here, this is completely full of reed canary grass uh, that took over because Kim's grandparents used to hay this. 
you know, and cut it every year. But then once it was turned over to the city, nothing was, you know, done. And for a little bit. For a while. And so re-canary grass took over the old, like, you know, uh, orchard grass, things like that, that used to grow here. The only way to kill it, really, is to cover it with trees. And the only thing that will compete are willow. And what's amazing with willow, you can just cut off about three feet of a little willow stick like this stick it in the ground in a wet area right along a creek which all creeks should be shaded pretty much at least mm -hmm. in our area and all of a sudden it just starts growing because it has a growth hormone that causes it to basically clone itself and grow right out of the stick don't try to like pull something out of the a, a willow out of the ground and plant it with roots it doesn't even work it just likes a chunk cut on both ends off oh, of yeah, a branch. Oh yeah, simple. Just cut off a mm -hmm. chunk and stick it in the ground. And that's so great. you can see all these are... And you can use it as a rooting hormone. Yes, that's true. You have to grow other things. Mm -hmm. uh, all willows. So they basically have to come up in order to shade out all this regenerary grass. But we got, we put in other things along with the Pierce Conservation District is the uh, organization that's in charge of restoring it now. And, you know, there's... Sitka spruce, which is basically the only thing that grows very well. They want wet feet. They, the wet forested Pacific Northwest forests of the Olympic Peninsula, for instance, are Sitka spruce, lowland, flat, wet forest. And check a look at this cedar tree. Now, cedar trees are known to like wet, but not Hi, this everyone. wet. <laughs> not this wet. Look at how brown it is during the winter when uh, its feet are so wet. But it was a big enough tree that it did survive. A bunch of other little ones we put in didn't work because it's so wet. So let's keep following the path um, over to the new creek. Now this used to not be here as of two years ago, uh, this cutout creek. It was a ditch going along by those houses over there. And it flooded every year and would once in a while flood our garage and the neighbors over that direction and sometimes those neighbors. And so what the uh, city did was contract with an engineer uh, and the lead engineer was Ken Fellows on our board of directors. Mm -hmm. And he uh, designed this where it's a hundred foot cut out. Can you point? Yeah. Okay. Uh, cut out from this edge by where the guitar is to the other edge. And they cut it out and dug it out about five feet down and put all the made hills over there. So we call them Meeker Hills because they're the tallest thing in the valley. <laughs> um, this is Meeker Creek. It used to be a creek, of course, running through here, but uh, Ezra Meeker, probably, um, and other town founders cut a ditch all the way through the valley in order to drain as much as they could of the valley, but that caused all sorts of... Yeah, and so then it goes right down here. And, and by the way, inside this 100 foot, they meandered a dug out even further down of about three more feet uh, where the creek would initially begin but it's free to meander between the banks 100 feet wide and then it ends up in Clark's Creek mm -hmm. which, which is down Clark's there. Clark's Creek if you can see with the, I'm sorry about the sun y'all but if you can see these big tall trees in the background here Clark's Creek is right at the base of oh, those trees. Yeah over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Clark's Creek drops only two feet over the course of two miles all the way to the Puyallup River. This is the lowest place in Puyallup in the valley. So if we ever had a big river flood, it would back up right into here. And this helps not only contain the floods coming from downhill, so it, it doesn't flood in this area anymore, but if a big flood came up from the river, it would probably lower the veracity by about a foot by having to go back up into here, hopefully. Uh, but especially it stopped all flooding coming from down off the hill which is great. All right, well, um, here's a nice little Sitka spruce being put in here. What else are they putting in there? Putting in some roses. Oh, roses. Mm -hmm. Wild roses. We've got red osier dogwood being oh, put yep. in over there. Beautiful, Beautiful red osier oh, dogwood. Oh my gosh, that's so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Probably some um, nine bark right there, which is amazing flower. Smells and so beautiful. Got um, aspen growing right here. Um, that do pretty well in wetlands. They like um, wet areas of dry areas. Like mm -hmm. if there's kind of a spring in some dry areas of the West, mountains and stuff. Um, Look at the amazing alder. You can ooh, still see yeah, there's a point. nice big alder this, tree. This little guy Oops, is right actually there. massive. Yeah. And you can, I don't know if you all can see it, but the brown cones are still hanging on the tree and the catkins have all come out. So that's one way that you can tell your hazelnut from your um, red alder 
is if you see the cones on it, it's an alder. If you don't see the cones and the catkins are coming out course, super early, yeah, like January, um, yeah, like January <laughs> then you've got yourself hazelnut, a hazelnut. But alder come out in the spring like yep. that. Yep. Plus so the beautiful. Sitka spruces are doing really well. Yep. All sorts of cool plants. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful out right now. Thank you for the sun. We're going to have a few sunny days with some interspersed rain. It's perfect springtime weather coming up over the next week. Yep. Thank goodness, because staying at a house all the time it really helps. But again, get outside. Oh my gosh, camera check this out. Oh, cool. Now this is old, but what do you all think that is? That's right, right next to the creek, got a, um, it's probably only about two years old because this uh, creek was only installed here well maybe it's been three three summers ago now cool and so yeah so you can tell that oops, this has been chewed now it's really old so it's hard to see all the chew marks but a beaver chew mm -hmm. oh what's that oh shade, shade yeah, yeah yeah the beaver chew is coming in through here it's getting old but that's pretty sweet mm -hmm. um now the neighbors sometimes get upset about the beaver backing up the water the beaver is a part of the natural ecosystem so yeah. we should learn how to work uh -huh. around that. make your comments if you love or hate beavers, beavers. <laughs> all right so down low are cattails i don't remember the conservation district putting these cattails in yeah, I but we did distribute to. seed down here, I think. Did no, I'm pretty, we didn't. didn't we? But we have we enough cattails, yeah. they would have just blown over yeah, here. Yeah, that's so. probably what happened. Now there's reed canary grass coming right up in here too, so we mm -hmm. have to watch out. Maybe we'll pull that, but hopefully it won't creek. take over too much. And then here's the creek. Yep. Um, there are willows coming up, so that should shade out the uh, reed canary grass, but unfortunately it also shades out the cattails. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So it's flowing from left to right, or excuse me, right to left, but of course, I don't know whether you're seeing, oh, you guys are seeing it forward, awesome, right, because oh, yeah, <laughs> right. we turned things around. Uh, left to right going down hill Oops. here. Got to show this to Ken uh, and all the fellows, brothers, mm -hmm. to uh, show them what a wonderful job they've beautiful? done. Isn't mm that -hmm. beautiful? We are so lucky to have this for yeah. so many reasons, and the birds that are coming in. Oh. Yeah. Of course, we scared them all off, but yeah, we're definitely going to do a off. bird tour someday when we realize that 6 to 6.30 is the hot time for birds to be feeding or something. Right now, it's kind of a lull, but as hey. the days get longer, it Doesn't changes. Doesn't it look like something comes in and yeah, out right totally. there? Yeah, mm totally. -hmm. Hmm. Maybe be a bird. I wonder who that is. Could be a muskrat. Maybe, oh, for sure. Yeah, there's a muskrat. Look at that. Right the creek Can y'all see where that's a little critter coming? Oh, my finger looks so massive. <laughs> right there. Yeah. What would you say we set up and do uh, do a song? Okay. Okay. Um, good. Should we? I can just hold yeah. the camera. So. I'll just put them right here. You can just tell me whether <laughs> it's looking at me or not. <laughs> um, not that I wanted to, but you know. Um, and so I've got a couple of choices of songs. I was thinking, oh, something about water, obviously, and um decided though that I prefer to sing a song about friendship and that's to thank everybody who's donated by clicking on the link um, many of our friends from years past I mean even one of my high school closest high school friends uh, donated uh, people students and parents from 10 and 15 20 years ago wolf camp other uh, friends of Kim's from the King County Search Dogs, all sorts of people, and we appreciate more. I think we've raised about a thousand dollars so far. Oh, we are so wonderful. thankful. And it's amazing. Uh, but our goal is ten thousand by the end of the academic. What would have been the academic year, in order to, which is what about what we would spend on administrative staff during the spring. And so, hopefully, we'll be able to keep that going. And. Um, these broadcasts are going to continue at 6 p.m. every day until this advisory is lifted or mid-June, whichever comes first. And um, But start thinking about what you'd like us to do because we do have a lot of stuff planned. But if you have any comments and suggestions, please put those on there for future broadcasts. What, anything on nature, outdoor, survival, earth skills, ethnobotany, birding, track, anything. It's, yeah, give us some more ideas. It. Yeah, uh, permaculture, Thank you. anything. And we'll prepare those. Yes. Um, sometimes we just, like today, we we just go out and do it. Go out and do it because we were so busy during the day. We didn't even advertise it. So hopefully there's a few people watching. Uh, and then tomorrow we're going to try to do that orchard tour, installing a community sidewalk garden if we have time, and a tree planting lesson and talk about the carbon cycle, how important that is to uh, mitigate and reduce climate change by planting trees. And my question to everybody will be, where do trees come from? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And then um, 
so we'll do that one or two days and then we'll start hopefully um, a wildlife tracking adventure. There's a spot I think we can get to um, that's not closed. We'll go scout. That we'll go scout and see yeah. if it's a wonderful wildlife Crossing tracking. Crossing my fingers. Animal tracking so area. awesome. Do some wildlife safety training as well as language of the birds and how to find animals and stay safe in nature by listening to the birds. Meantime, go outside, rain or shine. Um, and if you don't know what to do out there, we're going to share our wolf journey curriculum. Uh, so that you have something to do, field exercises to do that take 20 minutes uh, out in your yard or out on your porch. And um, it's an amazing way to learn about nature and to um, get deeper in yourself and learn a lot and um, stay healthy. So again, please ask all your family and friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash wolfcampcollege. We need a thousand subscribers in order to do these broadcasts live on YouTube out in the field with our phones. So I really appreciate that and donate if you get a chance. All right, here's a song, by, another song by Ken Lonquist. He was my favorite singer songwriter in college at the University of Wisconsin in Madison and go to kenland.com or Facebook slash Ken. <laughs> yeah, anyways, it goes like this. This is one of the first songs I ever learned. And this is to thank all the people who have supported us over the years and currently supporting our staff. Some try to find the reason they live this life at all. They watch the winter in the spring, summer in the fall, chasing their ambition. Like leaves blown in the wind When all the lonely answers in The faces of their friends Picture in your mind the face Of someone that you love And you look no further To find the meaning of this life which you struggle like a willow in the wind. You hold your ground as you give and take the strength you gain from friends. For in the face of friendship, the picture becomes clear. Lines that trace the smiles and the sorrows of these years are Understands a part of you you didn't know was there. You can't remember what your life was like before she cared, and when she isn't speaking, no one else can say as much. She stirs the deepest part of you, just the lightest touch. Even for the face of friendship this picture becomes clear lines that trace the smiles and the sorrows of your years are wrenched with care around the eyes of those who hold you tight you see them they see them so we are here you never need Why it is a deal You only want to offer 
Well, see you tomorrow.